You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Very, very glad to be hanging out here with you again, digging this time. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us. Definitely, got a got a pretty fast show for you here today regarding uh, options uh, for purchasing computers, which kind of goes right in line with uh, the new show that we did last week regarding Apple's new debut. Due to the chip shortage, uh, there is actually some actionable information in this show regarding purchasing computers. If you're a, if you're a drone pilot coming into being a drone pilot, or maybe you're an experienced drone pilot looking for a new computer, uh, there are some new uh, crazy awesome options out there for you, and we're gonna get to those today. Which, by the way, today's show is brought to you by the Props Educational Platform built by Drone U. Now we've got a brand new DroneU program called Props Business. Now this business course is fundamentally different from the business course available to DroneU members. How is it different? Well, essentially what it does is it teaches drone pilots, creatives, and even technical pilots on how to redevelop the back end of their website. It showcases exactly how to build in autonomous systems to automate the client journey. So when you're servicing those clients, and you need to send them emails to say, here's the location that we're gonna fly, here's the flight plan, you're confirmed for this time, all that is done automatically. What about getting to learn your client and what they really need? Well, we can automate that as well. Once you actually fly for the client or produce a deliverable or even take photos for a client from the ground, this automated system is gonna help you keep the client in the loop. Everyone loves communication. That's really where business relationships flourish is with communication. So why not automate that communication to set the expectations of when they can expect their deliverables, what they can do with those deliverables, how to access them, and make it a step-by-step, hold your hand process that makes your clients feel like they're being taken care of personally. That way you can automate the delivery of your media and even automate the potential upsell potentials. I mean, literally, imagine, think of the prints here that are in the back. What if your clients could order prints of your beautiful photos and have them taken care of autonomously? If you are ready to automate the systems of your business so you can scale your business, keep it going and keep it growing and build your revenue, then you've got to check out the Props Business course available on props.thedroneu.com. Hey guys, I appreciate you what you guys are doing. Um, I just got my Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced Industrial Scout drone in today and get myself set up and I want to know what would be the best computer for me to get a tower, laptop, in your opinion, what do you guys use and how efficient are they to get what we need to get done for professional deliveries? Deliverables, yikes. Anyways, appreciate it. God bless you guys. Look forward to hearing back from you. Thank you very much, uh, Cody. Uh, I got here, David, but in quotes, Cody. So Cody, your nickname? Which is funny, because it it really sounded like Vic at the end, like he was sending in a question, but I know it's not him. Yeah, anyways. Definitely. Um, Cody, I'm gonna go with Cody, since it's in quotes, it appears that's what you uh, would like to be called, and we wanna call you what you wanna be called, but we appreciate the question, and what's going on with laptops? Uh, Why are you laughing? I, uh, I, uh, I identify as a Mac laptop user. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not touching that political. Uh, oh man, there's so many fun ways so, we could go with that, and yeah, we're not going. And to. we're not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I would say that this question has a lot more validity in the last few weeks, just because of uh, the chip shortage affecting the Windows side of computers. And with Mac or Apple rolling out their new MacBook Pro series with the uh, the M1 chips, so I actually think that this is a very uh, relevant question, Rob. Yeah. Uh, and it's also a quick reminder, as we have done shows like this in the past regarding computers. It is a quick reminder to just reiterate that, based off of the type of jobs that you're doing, you might want to use one particular operating system over another one. Uh, for example. 
you know, if you're doing kind of mapping deliverables, um, modeling deliverables, it's probably going to be in your best interest to buy a Windows based machine versus if you're more in the creative realm, you're editing photos, you're editing videos, uh, you're probably going to find it easier uh, and, and better to work in the Apple kind of uh, environment. And I will say, you know, I use both. It took me a couple of weeks to be able to go from Windows to Mac, but now I can never look back uh, because I really love MacBooks, but I can operate on Windows as well just fine. So let's talk about new laptop options for Mac or Apple users. Uh, so let's really, really quick. Apple did come out with two new MacBook Pros and they brought back the MagSafe charging, which I couldn't even believe they ever took away because it was probably one of the smartest, most brilliant designs of a computer ever. It really was amazing. I, I love just pulling it out just for fun. Literally. I mean, if someone, <laughs> if your dog or your child runs into the cord, instead of your computer going slamming into the ground, the magnetic device just disconnects from the computer and the computer is fine. And what, Yeah, and so probably too many weeds along these lines, but it didn't matter the angle, right? Because no. like on this, if you, if you pull the angle wrong, if it comes straight out, it's probably going to do the same thing. Yeah. Anyways, it was just, it's genius, yeah. And so yeah. that's back, okay. Yeah, good. and the fact that they took that away is astonishing. But yeah. uh, it I'm sure goes, they had a good reason why it just uh, turned out to be a better reason to bring it back. At least Apple listened to their power users because we all wanted yeah. that back. Uh, you know what else they brought back, Rob, was an HDMI port so you can continue to play Netflix at various Airbnbs that have, <laughs> have subpar cable service. Um, and they also brought back... Oh, the SD card slot. So you no longer need to buy a computer and spend $500 on dongles. Uh, <laughs> you now have everything that you need. Which is great because these computers start at two grand, as I understand. They it. are expensive. Well, that, forgive me, $19.99. Now, okay, but here's a key point. And now this is where every mainstream media uh, crappy reporter who just reads a teleprompter failed the American people. Wow. Uh, this is probably one of the most important developments from the Apple uh, debut of these laptops. But normally with Apple based laptops, in order to get the full computing power that is marketed and hyped in the tech sheet, you have to buy the larger laptop, right? The 16 inch over the 14 or the 15 over the 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. But with Apple's new M1 chip, and because of their thermodynamic design, you can get the smaller form factor and still have the massive power capacity of the larger laptop in the smaller form factor. So meaning you can buy a smaller computer at that cheaper price point, that two grand, and still have the full capacity, full power of the larger laptop mm. in the smaller one. Cool. So that's actually a huge money saving tip is that uh, if you want, you know, high end power and you want all of it, you don't want to be throttled for whatever reason. Well, now with these new MacBooks, you can buy the smaller one and get the full power, essentially. Interesting. Uh, and, so, you know, as we look at prices, uh, say, for example, you want to get uh, like a gaming computer to have similar power. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking twenty five hundred, three grand and above. Yeah, so it's going to be expensive either way. But it is a good point, though, because when we talk now moving on to Windows based laptops, uh, with the chip shortage, I would actually still recommend the people who are in mapping and modeling, they actually look at laptops because of laptop based GPUs uh, and their availability versus desktop based GPUs and their unavailability. And so, for example, the Alienware series, the R4s and the R5s, the R4s are currently on sale at Best Buy. It's You can either get a, a NVIDIA 3070 or a 3080 GPU, which is extremely powerful uh, and should be able to handle all of your mapping and modeling capabilities, I would say up to five or 10,000 photos. And uh, frankly, you can get one of those for 24, 2,500 bucks, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, now that said, those computers don't really work too well with creative media. It is possible, but they don't really do, they don't really do a solid job. Um, so that said, if you are in Windows and you're doing mapping and modeling, check out the Alienware series of computers. There are some on sale, believe it or not. And because of the chip shortage, I do recommend laptops over desktops currently. 
explain that, how the chip shortage leads you to that conclusion. Well, because the chip shortage is a microprocessor shortage, but there's also a GPU shortage that's affected by the microprocessor shortage. Because of the advent of cryptocurrency mining, a lot of the GPUs are bought as fast as they're released, meaning that the desktops that use these GPUs are not really uh, available as easily uh, as they normally would be. They're, they're, they're a little bit more expensive than they would be. Gotcha. Whereas laptop GPUs cannot be transferred into a desktop. You can't take the GPU out of the laptop and transfix it to something else. It just doesn't work that way. Right. So because those GPUs are not in high demand because of cryptocurrency mining or uh, uh, cloud computing you know, going off the rails, finding those laptops is a lot easier because of the GPU microprocessor issue. Interesting. If that makes sense. Yeah, interesting. That said, I think, you know, if you're on the creative side, Mac has those really nice new laptops. I would not recommend the older ones uh, unless it's the 2015 model, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, they also have the new Mac minis, which are really powerful. They went back to an eight core i7. Uh, or you can get it with the M1, which is even faster, and that's a that's a very powerful little machine, frankly. And if you're on, if you're budget conscious, and you need a creative computer to bootstrap your business, the Mac Minis are back, baby. And I will just remind everyone that back in the day, I started my drone business with a Mac Mini, and it lasted me years. It still works to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would I would really tell everyone, you know, if you're on a budget, Mac Mini, they're amazing. And as an aside, just to clarify, if somebody wants to do a little gaming on the side, probably going to need the NVIDIA. I don't think the Mac's going to yeah, um, gaming, right? Yes. Yeah. If you're into gaming and you have a drone business, first of all, I would not mix those two. Uh, just, just to be 100% <laughs> real. Yeah, um, Possibly. Yeah. I mean, if you look at just the amount of memory that's being used by some of these applications in the background, it's ridiculous. So, you know, with mapping, you really need to have a bare bones computer, as we've seen with lots of students who have a bunch of junk on there bunch of junk in their trunk computer, uh, then uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna struggle creating deliverables. So if you're into gaming, I would recommend a separate machine. Uh, but if you don't have the money for that, then just get a really, really, really powerful Alienware computer. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, you can do just about anything with it. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess you, and if you get used to the software, even on the creative side, good solution. Oh, I agree. And one other thing that I would tell people is there's really not a big difference between the laptop version of the 3080 and the 3070 GPUs. So you can save a little bit of money by getting just the 3070 and it won't be a significant difference in mapping processing. So, Or in hash rate. And on that bombshell, <laughs> that will do it for us today. You can now call him Crypto Mining Rob. <laughs> Enough to be dangerous. Goodbye.